Oh, hello. Hi, I'm going to teach everyone a song from Crazy Rich Asians. Maybe some of you guys are familiar with the movie, and maybe some of you have noticed. <laughs> Asian? Yes. Crazy? Yes. Rich? No, but piggybacking off of a popular Hollywood film? Absolutely, let's get started. Has everyone reviewed their Mandarin tones and done a basic vocal warm up? Yes. 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 Amazing. So if you guys locate your programs on the side that says Rockfish, you'll find the lyrics for this next section in a black box. <laughs> Everybody good? Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's a simple repeat after me. We go, wa, wa, wa yao, wa yao, wa yao ni, wa yao ni, wa yao ni di, wa yao ni di. And then we start with a big finish, a two liner. We all sing together. I'll sing it once and then you guys can sing with me. It goes, wa yao ni da ai, na 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 na. <laughs> Try it with me. Boy, I need to hide. Na, 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 na. That sounds awesome. I think we're ready for music. <laughs> Why not 
Chinese food is good for healthy. No, it's not that. I just mean like, I don't really think we're supposed to have food in here. Uh, and I especially don't think we're supposed to be like eating it, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, why you no risk the Chinese fairy godmother? It's very disrespectful. Eat, 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 eat more, eat more, eat more, eat, 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 eat. Uh, Why are you eating so much? You're going to get the fat. <laughs> Step two. Hug a panda.
menu for my grandparents' Chinese restaurant in Minneapolis. It used to have this huge Chinese dragon statue out of the front. And when they sold the restaurant, they donated the statue to Moorhead State, which is actually where it still is today. This is my mom. And this is my grandma. And this is my great grandma. And this is my great great grandma. And these are all the things that I brought from my grandparents' house after they passed away. Sometime in 1950, my folks came. And when the communists first came to Shanghai, my dad decided to stay there than uh, leave. They said, there's so many Chinese over there, so I'm just one of them. Uh, it couldn't be that bad, so he stayed. He, he was one of the capitalists. So communists came, they still wanted to run the bank. A lot of things he cannot do before, so he was losing money. And the comments were going to close the, close the bank down, just keep putting money in, keep putting, keep putting money in, keep them up, keep the bank money. The bank was, the bank has about hundreds of employees, so they don't want, to, they want you to support them rather than to throw them out of business. And uh, before the communists came, we had a lot of my dad, again, is one of those kind of person. Anybody wants a job, he'll try to make a job for, for the people in the family. They all kind of long to him. And about four or five months after the communists came, one of the Dutch ship came, to, the first ship came to Shanghai after the communists took over. Stopped in Shanghai, took on some passengers and came to Hong Kong. And one of my cousin was on the ship. And he booked the passage so to leave, leave Shanghai to come to Hong Kong. And he came to say goodbye to Dad. And, and we have a chauffeur there. The chauffeur was so dumb. And he was driving Dad and my cousin to, back to my house, back to our house. Couldn't he just come to say goodbye to Dad. And he mistook that dad's going to leave. Dad's going to leave on that ship. So he passed away around, dad's going to leave. So they had all kind of people standing by trying to trying to capture dad if he intended to leave. So that was Saturday. And Sunday, all of a sudden, we get all a whole stream of villagers coming in. The more senior people come up with the dad there in the house. And then Dad doesn't know what's going on. He said, how come and you come and visit me? He's talking about all kind of nonsense and so on. And, uh, and when one will one will leave, the other one will come. And he said, what the hell's going on? And he still doesn't realize what's going on. And uh, finally, they satisfied dad that I'm going to leave with the ship to Geneva, but they could leave with the ship to So they're happy. And some of the guys find it. They said, yeah, they have some people stationed outside the house. Uh, some people are at, the, at the pier. If you ever get in the pier, they will physically capture him. Don't want him to leave. So, so 
Finally, it all came out. Some some of the lawyer people that lawyer to us, they said they they were they were required for us to come come to our house, to station the house, and so on. So I wasted so much of my time. So the next time when they really decided to leave, so they didn't let anybody know they were going to leave. And they stayed a, a year longer than that after that that event. One of my uncles, she I don't remember the mother's, mother's sister's husband. And he told dad, he said, hey, if you stay here, you're going to lose your life. The way, the way things are evolving. He said, you have to leave now. Well, eventually they got rid of all the capitalists. And, uh, he said, it's no, no point for you to stay. If you stay longer, okay, you're going to eventually leave. And just lose your life. So that convinced them. So what they're gonna what they were gonna do is they're not gonna pack anything. Obvious could take it. So so two weeks before that they were going to going to what you call it, going to, going to my mother's brother's house. Periodically they stay there overnight or something. So they they keep taking things over there to the center for double practice to get take with them. So mom, dad, and Harry came. So they keep keep taking little, little bits and pieces to to the brother's my mother's brother's house, a sample level suitcase. And the day they left, they told them, say, yeah, we're going to stay overnight over there. I said, no, no, of course. This is my mother. This is my grandmother. This is my great grandmother. This is my great great grandmother. This is my great 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 grandmother. This is my great 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 great. -great This one is a picture of me and my brother Kevin, and um, we're sitting on my parents' favorite orange couch that actually they had for a long time. And um, you can see that we're very friendly with each other. That's probably not how life always was. Um, this is a picture of my mom. And um, here she looks very young, and so I'm thinking that this picture either was from her time in Hong Kong or possibly Brazil. That would be nice to know. I think if I spoke to one of my older cousins, maybe she would know, because yeah, she looks really young here. Um, so this picture is a picture of my mother's family showing my grandmother and her, I'm thinking, let's see, so there was Pat and William and um, Larry, and I think this is all the boys. So my mom was um, one of the youngest in the family, so this picture shows 
my grandmother and her four boys. I don't think this baby is my mom. No, it wouldn't be my mom. It might be my aunt or, yeah. The baby, you can't tell if it's a girl or a boy, but um, the rest are boys, so those are all my uncles. So, um, and so this must be in Shanghai. And then this picture, this picture shows my grandparents surrounding an older person. So this must be my great-great-grandmother. Um, and I'm trying to see if I recognize any other relatives in here, but really I don't. So I think your grandma's in there too. You no, know, yeah, I see my grandmother and my grandfather. My grandfather has a dark glasses, so we called my grandmother Abu, and we called my grandfather Yaya. And um, do you want me to talk about what I remember about? Uh, so, um, so my grandfather didn't live very long. I mean, he died when I was pretty young. But uh, my favorite memory of my grandfather was that he um, um, he had he gave me a, a bank one day, and it was my first bank that I ever received. I can't remember if it was in the shape of a dinosaur or something. But um, I was always, um, I always wanted a bank because like when I would pick it up and I would shake it, then I would hear all the coins jingle around there and I thought that was so cool. So he gave me a bank and, and I immediately picked it up and I shook it and of course it was empty. So I was like, uh, kind of disappointed. So then, um, so then he realized I wanted some change in there. So he put money in there and then of course my mom lectured me because that was pretty rude to be asking, you know, to have money put into the bank besides the bank. But that's, uh, but he did it. He was very kind and he, <laughs> he didn't make me feel bad at all for asking for money. Um, and then my grandmother, um, one time she came and she visited us when we lived in Massachusetts and it was her birthday and um, she gave us an envelope of money and I didn't understand why she was giving us money when it was her birthday, but that was something that she wanted to do and I thought that was really very sweet of her and very kind. So um, that's, that's probably the, yeah, that's probably the strongest memory I have of my grandmother. My grandmother, Rita Lee, was born in Shanghai, China. At the time she was living in Shanghai, the communists were taking over the Shanghainese government. Her father, a businessman, was worried about this change. He knew the international borders would soon be closed, so he decided to move the family to Hong Kong. Rita's family stayed in Hong Kong for three years until Rita was 10. Anyone in Shanghai with enough money had left because they were worried about the changes that communism would bring. This left Shanghai with a lot of poor people and very few to manage the city's businesses. In an attempt to convince him to return, the Shanghainese government decided to pay Rita's father a visit. Rita's father did not want to return to China and was worried that if he refused, the government might kidnap him he tried to move the family to the United States. The Chinese Exclusion Act prevented his application from being accepted. So, he moved the family to Brazil. The trip to Brazil was very unusual. From Hong Kong to Los Angeles, they took a ship, and then, by bus, went to San Diego to visit relatives. They took a train to Chicago before making a final pit stop in New York, before taking another ship to Brazil. On the ship to Brazil, Rita and her younger sister Amy were placed in the infant section of the ship, even though Rita was 10 and Amy was 8. This meant they spent all day in daycare, which as you can imagine was very boring. At night, they would go out and try to see shows on the ship, but often the crew would recognize them and put them to bed because of the curfew.
When they arrived in, in Brazil, they lived on a small island off the coast where Rita's father did business. Everything they had brought from China had been packed into large trunks. And in Brazil, they finally had the chance to unpack everything. As they were unpacking the trunks and unwrapping the items, they realized that everything had been stolen and replaced with 